Hey everyone, right, obviously me, Paul Daniels here, and hopefully today, tonight, we will actually have some level of success, since we've been plagued the last day and a half or so with not successes, or at least nothing that's satisfying, you know, we're stuck with all these limbo solutions, things not quite working how we want, we haven't had any of that really nice, satisfying, smoking gun fault and a solution. Anyway, so we have a um, coffee stained 1466, at least we know what's wrong, and supposedly on this, what have we got, uh, let's see, SD card stopped working completely, lightning port intermittently, USB port most of the time, machine otherwise works well, and unfortunately that's that end which of course is on the main board, which means that we can't just simply replace the daughter board. The way life goes. All right, let's get this open, no point testing this. The more you run this one, the worse it's going to get. So we just get these screws out, switch to the overhead. Bunk. Hey iPad for you, Jim, Andrew, Ed, DJ, Steve. I'm going to miss some people here. Ah, g'day ZX. Yeah, Pianov. Uh, except Pianov, it's not going to be a DC board. Sonia Limpke. I don't recognize that name. Welcome. Hey, Margarita. Yeah, no, Pianov. At first thought when the job came in, I thought, yay, DC board fit. And then I realized very quickly thereafter that, nope, that is not what it's going to be. So I'm hoping that at least the ports themselves will just have, you know, copy junk in them and maybe the electronics will need some cleaning up. But other than that, hopefully the pins and all that of the affected ports haven't been damaged sufficiently to cause issues. The bottom corner doesn't look good. Well, it would have been all around here, so we may have backlight issues as well. Oh hell, this is a 2012. Alright. Alright, we just um, had hardness level jump up a little bit. Okie dokie. That's fine. Seem to be running into 2012s a bit lately. Interesting. Label let him. Have to get a customer. Ah, shame. Sorry about that. I could cheat and just put another 2012 board in. But that would be cheating, wouldn't it? Hey, Igor. Which reminds me, I need to catch up on someone who offered me a whole bunch of potentially repairable boards. I asked them if they had a lot price for me to just buy everything from them, but they haven't responded back. They messaged me saying, we've got a bunch of boards. Are you interested in them? This is what we've got. And I said, well, just give me a lot price. It's going to be easier than me picking and choosing. And I'll lose on some and I might win on some others, it's hard to say. DJ Craze, general question, all types of Apple laptops, which one seems to be victim of coffee spills the most often? Hmm. I think they all tend to... i got to admit though, it seems like the newer ones suffer it more than the older ones. Maybe it's the bright lights of the fancy touch bar. That confuses them, and they're like, I can't see, and then drop coffee on it. Keith McDermott, you're in lockdown until the 1st of the 8th. Oh, man. What, did you just come back from another country, or have you been diagnosed? Or were you in contact with someone who was diagnosed? Could you spray scotch guard on the board? Not real. I mean, you can, but it doesn't really end up doing much. And probably cause more complications than not. I 
I mean, I know some people have suggested why don't we just conformal coat the entire board, but that actually is not a practical thing to do. Given that 99.9% .9 of these machines never run into a liquid damage situation, you can see from the company's perspective that's not much point adding the cost. And there's also the problem of when they're manufacturing the boards, they need to be able to test them. So that's what all the test points are for. And if your test points are covered in something, then it makes that harder for them. And you say, well, they're not going to test it after the... Um, after they've finished it, why don't they cover it up? And that makes it complicated again because then you're going to be coating other contacts like keyboard contacts and all that sort of stuff. So at the end of the day, you're still going to have exposed points. You're still going to get liquid damage on them, so there's really not much point. Hey, Lewis, done the free yo. Diagnoses high risk due to me immune system. Ah, I'm sorry to hear that, Keith. Yeah, it's rough, rough, rough. I'm fortunate out where I am that you know we're in a state at the moment where there's no real cases that no publicly known cases, and we are in a rural zone, so we don't have quite the degree of social contact, like I can see all the coffee here. This may boringly become just an ultrasonic. This is a refurb board though. So we do have a refurb sticker on this. Uh, Andrew, I just got your reply to my reply. I haven't had a chance yet. No, I did think I did bring them up. I'll just have a look. Not sure where I'll put them. Or maybe they're still downstairs. Yeah, they'll be around somewhere, but yeah, there's my original, of course. <laughs> Alright, let's have a look at this. Yeah, Apple refurbs are not usually a good sign. And, yeah. Alright, so, yeah, we could definitely see the coffee there. This may just end up being an ultrasonic job. Wow, we're really going to go for the whole, everything is boring today. Oh, I can definitely see why the SD is out. But again, that looks like I could literally put it into the ultrasonic end in and it might come out good. Someone's had their fat fingerprints all over this. Not me, I wear gloves. There, when you see these stickers, it's usually a bad sign. Maybe not in this particular case, because the fact that we are looking more and more like it is simply a physical obstruction situation. And not anything electronically wrong. Alright, let's have a look at those end ports. Hey Prater. Pro Engineer, finally able to catch a stream. Ah, right, yeah, thanks. Oh, wow, that's, uh, that's, that's some nasty, <laughs> oh, that's disgusting. Uh, it's truly vile and horrible. All right, so everybody have a good look at this. Have a good, juicy look at that, and we're going to see how well the ultrasonic does with it. Oh, that was like picking off a good chunk of booger there. Hmm, I wonder if the enzyme method would work on this. People are wondering what the enzyme method is. It's a uh, fancy term for spit. <laughs> like what your mother does to your face when you're a kid. Yeah, alright. 
I might... Hmm. I might as well just wash the whole board. That's definitely a high milk one. Well, uh, Teresa, I'm glad you like the voice. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of people come here for the action of the soldering gun. And the croaky voice of a misplaced South Australian in North Queensland isn't really to their appeal. Victor, Niha, Niha Ma. How? I've got to learn to say how for good. And then I've got to go say Niha Ma. For some reason, I just fail to be able to reco recollect the things I'm learning on Duolingo. Like, just 15 minutes ago, I was on Duolingo learning more Chinese, or rather going over my existing, and, you know, I was getting perfect scores on everything. But then when it comes to actually in real life, all of a sudden I blank out. I can read it more than I can do anything else right now. I guess it's just one of those practice things and getting comfortable. Okay, so I've got that howl bit. And then I never know how to control my accent on it. It's just a bit like when I listen to people, Chinese people, speaking English, you know, we always think it sounds a bit funny. And I dare say to, um, it must be interesting from a non-English person's perspective to hear English people trying to speak their language. I guess that's the case no matter who you are, unless you're one of these incredibly talented people that seem to impart no real accent, uh, or at least they manage to come up with a very good local accent when they do speak in another language. It's quite a talent. All right, we're just going to throw this in the ultrasonic, which I turned off about 10 minutes ago. That's okay. It should still have enough residual heat in it. <sighs> the trouble is, it's going to get noisy. Let's put this somewhere. Then again, I must say, thinking about accents, the locals here don't seem to think I have a local accent, which is true enough. Okay, into the ultrasonic you go. Here comes the horror. Ah, it's too loud for me to handle. Yeah, with, without these, even though I have poor hearing, I would be making my hearing even worse. So it's more a case of I'm protecting what limited hearing I have. Hey Nick White, thank you, welcome, I appreciate that. It's good to see the new people. Uh, last night was a out of the ordinary live stream. We had 
I think it was like 840 odd people turn up and within a couple of hours uh, we got up to 20, about 24, 25,000 views and about 90 new subscribers. So I don't know what happened but wouldn't mind that happening again. <laughs> how bad, how bad is the ultrasonic right now? I wish I had a thick blanket, a thick blanket to throw over it and shut it up. It's alright? Alright. Uh, let's see. Let's try and look around and see what other jobs I've got to finish up with. Ow, that hurt. And here's one we destroyed earlier. I've just got to put this one back together. This is one of my own. And I think a couple of weeks ago we used this to test some stuff and I haven't had a chance to put it back together. So now is a perfectly good opportunity. Well, that clearly does not fit. Right, that's, that's the one we want. Sorry about the noise. Like I said, once I've got my new workshop, once I've got this house and the workshop being built, I will create a proper soundproofing room for the ultrasonic. So we can do the ultrasonic and, and people don't have to scream. A bee dog, welcome. Thank you. It's I don't tend to be quite as exciting as some other people on the this sort of uh, work, but I just you know do my thing, plot along, day in day out. So here at Fruit and University, we have ultrasonic pools. 50 litres of cleanser of water. Wow, that's a 20, 22 litre cleaner. So it's not far off. Yeah, Pro Engineer, it's my ultrasonic cleaner. So yeah, we're just putting this 1465 back together so that it's ready to be able to use as a test reference machine or something like that whenever it is that I need it in the future. I do have a fair few of these machines, just one of each, so that when people bring in machines and I don't know what I'm dealing with or I can't be sure if it's normal or not, then it's nice to have a test machine that you can just reference from. That goes for five minutes each side, so we've still got, once it stops, we'll have another five minutes. I think the reason why these ones are a lot noisier is because they do, they're just a metal shell. There's no dampening of any kind inside. So I think it'd be a, a good thing for me to put it in a sound dampening container for everybody's sake. Oh, you do not fit in there. Okay, that's phase one. Now we've got to turn it over and do it again. Uh, Simon, I'll, I'll build one. It's just it's a case of finding the time more than anything else. Wish time was available as I want it to be, but it's not. Plus, also I have to find room and make sure the piping and the power and all that sort of stuff 
can come in and out of it. Sounds like a dial-up motor on steroids. It certainly does. Hi there, Nicky Devote. So yeah, this machine is not a customer machine, it's my own. It's just one of my test ones. But we're just using the couple of minutes while we wait for that board to uh, put it back together. No doubt I've already lost half the screws. That's really annoying. The Mr. Mech 85. Okay, this is a 1465. Not exactly which. I think it's a... This is a 3435 Ford. Yeah, these must belong to yet another one that I've disassembled somewhere. Maybe. Yeah, you're definitely not the right connector. And you're definitely not the right connector. This is where it gets problematic when you start pulling apart stuff and you don't put it back together straight away. Is that now I don't know where those things are. It's funny, for some people this sort of noise, as you say, triggers to notice, for other people it actually placates it. I mean, for me, it sounds like tinnitus just outright. But then afterwards, I will have a bad case of tonight where it will flare up. Because of the actual intensity of the sound more than anything else. <sighs> Damn it. Yeah, I've definitely now misplaced those. The parts, the battery, the solid state stick. Although this is actually a... This is a 1216, so I've got plenty of those. The Wi Fi. Fast fashion screens, what do you mean like um, transitions on videos? It's almost over, look. This isn't the right board. This is not the right board for this machine. Yep, it's not the right board. Just realised that now. This is a 1369, I think. Okay, finally that's over. Yeah, that's the uh, wrong board for that machine. The different colours on the LVDDS connector should have s alerted me to that as well as the different styling of the connectors from the DC inboard okay, just get this to drip off a bit and try not to carry too much of the cleaning fluid into the wash bath I should say the rinse bath I think I'm gonna have to put a 
a um, thermometer into this water because it genuinely feels like it's actually getting hotter than what I'm setting it to, which is I've set it to 69 or so. And at times I feel like it's actually pushing closer up to 80 or 90. I could be wrong, but anyway. Just want to get a bit more of a rinse. Make sure we don't have any of the caustic cleaning solution in there. At least with me putting the rinsing water on top of the ultrasonic cleaner, it keeps the rinsing water nice and hot. And then that means when you throw your board into the rinse, it yeah, lets that last little bit of stuff come off a bit easier. Okay. Alright, yeah, let's see if we had any luck here. <sighs> It's interesting that you should pick up a deep bass considering it's ultrasonic and well various harmonics of it, so um, it's probably some function of the microphone pickup. Might have been aliasing the ultrasonic at some level. Alright, let's have a look now. Yeah, it's still not perfect, but yeah, that um that's a not a bad job there. With that. There's a bit of junk down the back. I may consider putting it in for a little bit longer. That one, tolerable. Okay, now we get to see why the display port's having troubles. That's actually got a burnout problem, so what's happened there is that the coffee has created a bit of a short circuit, so to speak, and it's caused burning on the power pins. The USB should survive a little bit of picking should clean it up and I might be able to pick out that back I don't know what that uh, if that actually has any function it may just be a mechanical retention that one but it's not a bad effort Yeah, you would think people would pull the batteries out, but they won't. Well, not normally quickly. Besides, half the problem is you've got the pentalobes to restrict you. As it is with this one, it is fairly easy to disconnect the batteries on these. Mind you, you do still have to open up the bottom case. Yes, I do agree. Okay, I'm just going to see if that's a cavity caused by conduction or... But yeah, I am worried about this here. The display port does look a bit cactus. Alright, we're going to stick it in the oven and see how it fares after that. <sighs> Unfortunately, that's a 20 minute wait, so we'll get on to something else in the meantime. put this away since I've, I'm going to have to go through my piles of machines that have been disassembled and find out where this board actually does belong because this is definitely not the right board for it. Even though there are some things that line up. Hey Tony W, welcome. By the way Tony, those um, undesirable comments that you noticed showing up on the uh, comments of the video from earlier, 
I get them pretty much every single time. I usually do eliminate them. It's just I tend to do it as a batch process. So, but thanks for letting me know anyway. Appreciate that. All right, let's go back to that 2936 that we were working on earlier today. Just shift that. We've got another 2936. Now I'm going to make a comparison here. So this is my own 2936. And we'll get the one that is cooking up a storm. What is this? I'm always worried when I see a machine sitting in an inappropriate shelf. Uh, what's this one? What are you? Oh, this is the one that I can't get the CPU to come to life with either. Yeah. Yeah, uh, my shelves are filling up with the jobs that I'm actually having difficulty in fixing, and I don't like that one bit, as you can well imagine. Okay, what are you... No display on that one. That was last night's job. Okay, let's get back to this 2936, because at least we know it is actually working. All right. It's going to be so nice to get a bigger workshop. So we know this is one is working, but what we're not sure about is, is it running hotter than it should be? Or I should say the other one we've got on the floor. We're trying to work out, is it running hotter than it should be, or is it just normal? Now, if this one here, after I've opened it up and checked what I've got in here, posts similar values and similar sort of cooldown curves, then we can say, okay, fine, we, it's just the nature of the machine, and we'll let it be. We do at least seem to have not experienced the shutdown problem that it was having, or at least that it came in for, and we are supposing that that was caused by the fact that the heat sink was not properly on the uh, on the board. It sort of just over time sort of worked its way a little bit off the board a bit. Okay, so we've got nothing in here. We are plugged. So we can boot from our drive and we should get a similar type of behavior. Oh, that's right, this one's got a whopping great big crack in that. Funnily enough, it still works. I keep forgetting that it's there, and each time I look at it, I think, ah, I should really sell that 2936. And then I see the great big crack in the trackpad, and I go, ah, oh, I can't sell it because it's got a great big crack in the trackpad. Anyway. Boom. Hey, English, how's it going? Oh, yeah. So, what am I missing in the freeze frame there? Oh, speaking of which, I've got to update. We're working on... Okay. Update that job code. Wasn't the other one supposed to be stopping and restart? Yes, it was, and we haven't actually experienced that. And that was my fault for not testing it as it was before I decided to get excitable and pull it apart. So now we're working in an unknown proof, so to speak. Just sent you a donation, use an alias. Mr. Hedgehog, let us have a look. Hang on, is that through PayPal, Hedgehog? I will try and work on the software that allows me to bring it up on the screen as if it was a YouTube contribution. If you fully stress 315, it'll shoot to 105, throttle the fan till it ramps up to 6000, but then it'll get a bit better, but still throttle down to 2 gigahertz. Well, we'll see how this one goes, pan off. 
Thank you very much. Hedgehog, that's for the ten dollars. Two tubs of ice cream. Uh, another day closer to the day I get diabetes. I do love my ice cream a little bit too much. You're all enablers. So I hope you all feel guilty. <laughs> Ali of the repair dude. How are you, Ali? What do you repair? You too. <laughs> what's what's your favourite ice cream there, Hedgehog? How are those designed? Printed circuit board with castellations all over the place and a plastic cover, or do they have their own? Um, Christian, what boards? I think OBS has a plug in for PayPal. Okay, I'll have to have a look at that. Only you repair mobile phones and tablets. Okay, I do laptop repairs, but I don't make videos on that. Okay. Do you mostly focus on things like iPhone and uh, iPads, or do you do Androids? Touchpad. Ah, oh, you've gone off screen, sorry. Uh, I'm actually not sure how they do the touchpads. Pistachio. Okay. Hmm. Alright, so I'm looking at this and... Now, the temperatures are actually not too dissimilar, to be honest. Unfortunately, I can't zoom in. You do both. You're not a micro-solderer, by the way. Yeah, you know, I actually admire the people who can do things like iPads because I've tried a few and it drives me insane. It really, I just, well, I actually decline a lot of work because I won't do iPads. I will do iPhones, of course, you know, just screens and some degree of electronic repairs, but no thanks on the iPads. I mean, the fact that you've got to sit there and you've got to know exactly where on the iPad that you can't slide in the, um, you know, the cutting blade to separate the glue and, ah, it's like... And the fact that, like, if you cut that flex, you lose your Wi-Fi and you have to strip the whole thing out just to get to that fixed up. It's a nightmare. So, uh, I tip my hat to those people who do iPads on a regular basis. Saw the video. Oh right, yes, yeah, Simon, you're talking about how it would um, yeah, be. Is that the model? This is not. No, you're thinking of the twenty eight two zero. What is it? Twenty eight fifty. I think that's the one. All right, a couple of factors I want to look at here. One is the frames per second rate. So we've got about ten, twelve. Let's let's call it roughly ten and we're posting 82. I realize you can't see all this which is why I'm re relaying it to you. Our temperatures are just about 100 on the CPU and we are doing 6200 odd RPM. And if we look at our power consumption we are all over the place. Part of that's probably because it's charging the battery as well. You're in Singapore earlier the repair dude. Okay. There's a lot of people over in Singapore doing a lot of work on these phones and things. I can see the number of people pulling CPUs and well Well, like I mean they are designed to cope with it. Obviously you don't want it running every day, but you know, they can cope. When you think about the early AMD chips, they used to run super hot. Okay, so we're at 6200, that seems to be the maximum RPM. Yeah. Now what I want to see is how quickly it actually drops off. That's another good indicator of how well your heat pipe is working. So ideally, when you take the load away, you should fairly quickly restore back... Uh, 
let's have a look at temperature. Ah, all our temperatures are mangled together. What is interesting here is that it actually has taken a long time to come back down from that high temperature. Normally, one way I check with PC laptops to see if the heat pipe and the cooling is working properly is I'll put it under a high load and then I will stop the load and within about 10 seconds you should see the temperature come down quite a bit. But it seems like with this particular model Mac, it's holding on to the heat quite a lot. And I don't know why. Oh, so Pernov just mentioned, you can use Intel Power Gadget to monitor CPU consumption. Okay, is that much different to what the um, hardware monitor gives us? Yeah, that's still staying. Well, it seems like the behavior is normal then. Which makes me wonder, are we in a situation where we haven't actually solved the original fault yet? And maybe it simply has resolved itself by the fact that it's gone through the... Uh, process of being shipped and shaken around which leads us back to the idea that maybe it is actually a um, memory slot issue because yeah, the, the way the numbers are falling down here it's very much like the previous one so I'd say thermally our other board is fine No, I love that the CPU just picks up in temperature, just simply doing the display of this. Well, it certainly should be. I mean, to be fair, the way they've designed the exhaust ports on these is not great because the screen tilts back and obstructs it. So it's kind of very much self-defeating. But yeah, I mean, it is expelling the heat. I can feel it on the back. It's just not doing a great job because of the fact that you obstruct it. The clutch cover here basically blocks it. Was the other one shooting above 105? No, it wasn't, no. It would also sit at around about the high 90s and then dwardle for quite some time in the 80s and 70s. So I would say this is fairly much the same. It's interesting to note, I don't know if you can see it, it might help, but we've got a sawtooth pattern going on with the fan speed, so it drops down and then ramps up, drops down, ramps up, so I guess it's a fight between power consumption of the fan versus the need to remove heat. Alright, well we'll shut that down, so that one's mine. And as mine crashed, mine certainly trying to crash. Hello. Yep, this is why I don't sell these machines. Tell the customer they need to move to Antarctica so it doesn't run so hot. Yeah. Put it in the ice flow outside. Alright. Well, that one's mine, so I'll now put the screws back in. So I don't have a scenario where I repeat what I did with that other board that we saw, where I had the wrong board in the wrong case. Well, mismatched, I should rather say. Now it's kind of funny with my house scenario, with the now that I've got the savings and I have to go down to the bank. It's kind of weird, it's like I'm thinking, I guess I need to go to the bank. And I'm thinking, uh, yeah, I'll get to it soon. There should be a greater sense of urgency considering that I've achieved my goal. And I should be skipping down to the bank with bells on my feet. 
I think what's inhibiting me at the moment is the fact that I know I've got my tax paperwork to sort out. And this year is probably going to be a little bit expensive. It's probably going to be a, a few ten thousand dollars more than I want. Yeah, laughing all the way. I'll laugh if they give me the loan. That would be, and that'll be a happiness laugh, not an insanity laugh. Okay, so uh, that rattle noise is just the hard drive cable bouncing around. It's not actually a loose screw. All right, so we'll take the machine in question again and double check that we get the same results, which I'm fairly sure we will. Uh, the software is called Hardware Info or Hardware Sensors. It's funny, the name that it shows on the app is actually different to what you need to search for. Hardware Sensors for Mac OS. I'm just trying to find it for you now. Oh, whoops, there we go. Well, when it comes up, I'll <laughs> get the web address. The latest version, let's see what I've got there. Oh, that's fake SMC, right? Pernov is talking about something else to what I was looking for. Oh, come on. Won't be a moment, Victor. Yeah, Jason Jones, it is. We just have been testing with my own 2936 and we found that the same behavior is happening. So now I'm doing this one again to verify that it is as I think it is. And if it is, then yeah, we might, might be right. This is taking a little while longer to boot. Here we go, I found it. Ah. Oh, this is taking a lot longer than I'd expect to boot. Uh, it shouldn't be a RAM issue. Uh, what's going on there? You're welcome. And yes. By the way, I notice sometimes you just say shishi and other people say shishi ni. So is shishi just more like a thank you not to a person and shishi ni is thanking a specific person, I'm guessing. I'm guessing. Reset MV RAM. Uh, we'll do that once it's booted. And, um, oh, well, we've finished our reflow. I mean, not our reflow, dear God, no. Ow, yeah, that's just finished. That's still super hot. Yeah. I can usually tell if I've got the temperature at the limit of where I want it, like, without cooking it too much further, is that the plastic that goes over the CPU, if you've got it too hot, that will actually start to, you know, um, deform. But if you've got it just right, it should just sort of, curl ever so slightly but not deform as such okay here we go four uh, 
Let's have a look at the specs on this machine. About this Mac. So this is a 2.7 i7, 4 gigs. Okay, so it's a fairly hefty CPU. Shishini to someone you want to thank cr concretely or absolute directly. Yep. All right. And Shishi for general thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. She's pronounced like Shay. And you can use the shishi informal, shishi ni more formal. Okay, well that's interesting because I always thought it was, um, yeah. That's one of the problems I'm finding with Duolingo is that it depends, yeah, there's only like two voices on there, the male and the female, and there doesn't seem to be any variants. And so like when I'm listening to it, it comes across as shishi ni, but uh, as opposed to shashi ni, or shashi. Yeah. Fortunately, I can only hope that people listening will understand. And the other trouble is that there's definitely going to be nuances in the pronunciation of things that you don't realize are there until much later. Um, and in English, it's very much that too, like the difference between, say, uh, well, yeah, a more uh, significant example, say, like um, effect versus affect. And so it's, you know, if you're just learning the language, you won't pick up the difference between effect and affect so much, because you'll predominantly be listening to the something fact, something fact. So I guess this is where experience and actually talking with two people who are uh, natural speakers would help a lot. Fourth chain descending, okay. Well, a lot of Japanese does come originally from Chinese anyway, so that's why you do get a fair bit of crossover. Yes, I agree. I, I am aware of the four tone and how it can completely change the meaning of things. So it is. that's why I generally prefer to stick to the writing and reading, because at least then you don't have the tonal issues to fight with. Hey, Azio. Okay, so this is doing 10 frames per second, and we're actually doing slightly better on this one. This is on more the low 90s. So this is doing better than the other one. So I guess that pretty much means that we're good, and we didn't actually have to do any board repair on it. We just had to fix up the thermal paste. Yay. Trying to watch a few Mandarin language movies on Netflix, foreign films. I do watch most, uh, well actually I watch all of my foreign language, Chinese, Japanese movies in their native language and I just go by subtitles. But what I mostly listen to now at the moment are singing um, in Chinese. I know it's not really the ideal way, but at least they, because they sing the words slower, and most of the video clips seem to have it's subtitled. I find that interesting that a lot of them have subtitles so I can actually follow along without it being normal speech rate which I find very difficult to follow. So um, yeah, so for now I tend to watch a lot of Chinese uh, music videos with subtitles. Well, the music video has the subtitles actually part of the video not something that is added later. Sing tones is not easy now. For now, I'm just sort of trying to get customizations. All right, so we've got 6,000 RPM. We're in the low 90s. We'll stop this and see how quickly it drops off. Okay. 
So, so why did, why has China or all their stuff got the subtitles there? Is that so that they can? Ass- is it because there's a lot of variation between the accents between the regions? Um, is it because you've got the Cantonese and the Mandarin, which both use the Chinese, but obviously are said differently? Or is it also because maybe it makes it easier for people such as myself to learn the language and, you know, you got yourself another Chinese speaker? Too many people that do not know Mandarin. Okay, well, you mean within China? Or, I mean, because obviously you've got, I think it's the... Is it the southern region of China that is predominantly Cantonese or something else? My apologies if I'm completely butchering this. I'm only learning. It's a way to teach a whole population at once. Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, I'm glad to see I at least was somewhere along the lines of correct there. How to read and pronounce. Fantastic. Alright, so we're going to, with this machine, because we haven't been able to replicate the original fault because we kind of jumped the gun and replaced that thermal paste before we should have, or we messed with the heat sink before we had tested it, this will now have to go onto a test bench and just go for a few days to see if we can sort of statistically say that we've got a high probability of it being okay but um, it's it's going good it seems to be behaving well so for now we're going to say it is tentatively fixed uh, Cantonese is spoken in the south okay well, at least I'm not completely um, off base with everything You'll speak to others in Chinese and song way. <laughs> I might if I'm not careful. Yeah. Hey, Jose Arasola. Just got a China rework station after they broke into my office two weeks ago. Ah, oh, shame. That's not good. Yeah, I noticed it cooled down faster as well, Loke. So um, that was interesting. By the way, is it Loke or Loke? Um, is the E pronounced... This is turning into far more of a language stream than it is a uh, <laughs> than it is a repair stream. It seems. Okay. Well, we need to put all the screws back in, so I guess we'll do that. Ah, oh, my nose is just—it's having one of those itchy days. It must be all the lying I'm doing. Uh, okay, it looks like we've basically just got a lot of normal screws to put back in. You know, TX8, we want TX6 for these ones. Good old wearer. Dependable wearer. I have had a number of places approach me to ask me if I want to use their yeah, advertiser screwdrivers and things like that there's a few that you probably already know of that you've been seeing popping up on various facebook pages but uh, i've got to say i am even though it was fairly costly i am very happy with these wearer drivers wearer is not paying me for this i oops spasmed um i paid for these out of my own pocket simply because I was looking for something better. The only thing I'm griping about at the moment is that uh, they don't have a clear indicator of what they are. You know, you have to read the text or look at the tip. But I found out recently they released a series and they've all got colour-coded ends on them. It still doesn't tell you what the size is directly, but at least you know what you're grabbing for. You know, whether you're looking for a Torx or a Philips or whatever. And the little mongrels, they know that I'm going to buy that. It's like 250 bucks or so, but they know I'm going to buy it. I do need another set. I've got two sets at the moment. I've got one for the front work, uh, front reception. I've got one for this workshop here. 
and I'm going to need one for my mobile carry bag which I use probably once every two or three years it is like a air but so it sounds like air but a silent H eh, uh, okay cool alright well I'll work on that and see if I can do a better job of not butchering your name in future it just didn't seem right just saying Loke so I was like hmm it's like somewhere between Loke and Loki I'll work on it okay true sound of the E is mixed between the E okay I don't know that come on I'm a, just a simpleton English 26 letters no fancy bits alphabet person this is all very hard for me nearly at 50 to learn all these new things it's good for the brain though even if it hurts the brain hey Sammy Thailand. I've got a cousin from Thailand. Um, he'd be a little bit younger than me, but he was a uh, adopted from Thailand. I've got a few cousins that are actually adopted from there. So uh, some people in my family decided that uh, rather than uh, so it'd be better to help out people. So they went off and. Uh, mind you, back then, it, yeah, hopefully it was done right, but you can never really tell, can you? So I only know just under 4,000 kanji, pity there's 6,000 to know. Isn't there something like 15,000 Chinese characters or logographs? Or is that just the traditional ones versus the modern simplified? Uh, or was it 45,000 of the original complex or traditional and they reduced it down to 15,000 for the modern simplified? I can't remember. Okay, that's that done. Let's go. Japanese kanji. It's interesting that I never actually learned Japanese much because when I was about the age of seven, when I was living up in, um, living up in, well, well we're not going to say Kakadu National Park because it wasn't Kakadu National Park, but uh, there's a uranium mine up there. Anyway, there were Japanese people, investors and whatnot up there, and we were given a translation booklet. And I used to read that thing a lot, or at least what I could. And I, it would have been nice if I had actually at that time been able to take that a little further and you know, have that as a language under my belt. Especially that at the time there was a lot of, well there still is, a lot of Japanese people in Australia, particularly the northern parts of Australia. But that was just one thing that never quite happened. In October I'm officially 25 years in each country. Oh cool. Congratulations I guess. <laughs> What power supply is that? Which software display on screen? It's a um, it's a generic branding multi-comp MP7100 It's on my um, repair items page. But it is actually an O1 branded power supply. And I've forgotten what the proper O1 numbering is. The software is software I've written. It's not particularly complex. It is freely available on my github page 
Uh, it uses the SCPI commands. So it's nothing too complicated. Alright, this will now go into testing. I need to let it know, well I need to make a note of the fact that I've basically done nothing. What is this? Uh, 1279. Yeah, 1279. Heat sink. Heat pipe replaced. Thermal paste replaced. Testing yielded nominal results. Requires protracted testing to validate fixed status. Done. You probably, ah, Jason, yeah, nice try. I'm not fixing IMAX. Not with the distances involved to get stuff up here. It's just not worth it. I've had one iMac board come up here. The only way it would happen is if I happen to have a... No, I need a bigger workshop to start with. I need my 10 by 6 workshop at the very least. Uh, let's see. All right, let's see if the ports actually work on this. Let's have a look at what state they're in now that it's dried. Yeah, that, yeah, it's not a pretty connection. I am worried about the carbonization that's going on there. And there's a bit of corrosion feeding to the back under here, so that's a problem too. I might have to get some spray contact cleaner. I'm not sure how effective that will be. Spray contact cleaner will um, often you know, break down a lot of that. Okay, I need to make a toothpick out of this kind of shave that off a bit. Should do the trick. Ah, damn it! Sorry, folks. One day, one day I'll get the HDMI thing, and this won't happen anymore. Seriously, you're gonna do this to me? Let's see if it comes. <coughs> see if it comes back. Doop, 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 doop. Yep, it's back. It didn't appreciate that I yeah, went off to do other things. Okay, that looks like it was just, it's mostly just dust now, a bit of green dust. So that might come out with a few contact cycles. It's actually nice wood for a toothpick. This is the back side of those little gun cleaning swabs that uh, Wayne Taylor sent me. It's nice because it's the grain runs mostly parallel and it's not too hard but it also doesn't feather out too much so it's a good combination. You spend years making balsa wood aircraft you sort of learn to appreciate a nice piece of wood. 
Yeah, the green is corrosion, um, usually copper component to it. But it looks like it was more a residual leftover that's been washed out, but there's still sort of like a calcified structure there. I don't know, it, it might have got that from the um, the milk or something like that. Anyone have a tip for repairing an HDMI connector that's used over a long time? A bit sloppy now. Uh, no, nah, replace it. But of course you're probably going to tell us now that it's in a very difficult to replace location. But that would typically be about it. That is the one thing I was never happy about with HDMI is the fact that they engineered it, it seems, separately from the reality that cables weigh quite a bit and can impart quite a lot of stress. And so we now end up with these HDMI ports that just suffer sag issues very quickly. Yeah, it's um, definitely frustrating. So what were they thinking though? We're going to have these super light cables or something? I don't know. Needs to say it is a problem. Uh, crikey. Ah, there you are. It's a home cinema receiver, so it's easy to replace, I'd rest. Maybe hard to find the part. Uh, yeah, that's a good point you make there. It's a bit like finding replacement USB ports. And people go, oh, it's just a USB port, replace it. It's like, hey, you know how many variants there are of those things? Pretty much every man and his dog has created their own variant of the USB port. If you're lucky, you'll find something comparatively similar, and then you'll realize after you've sold it all together that it's actually an upside-down version. And that's when you do a Darth Vader impersonation, get down on your knees and go, No! That was so lame. I think everybody in the theater did that because of just how lame that was. I mean, come on, it was Darth Vader, for goodness sake. I don't know, did... George Lucas put that in for comical effect? You let me know. The whole damn... Uh, it was just terrible. Between Jar Jar Binks and... Uh, the stupid... Lightsaber stance from... What's his name? Ah, uh, well, I can't remember his name. But yeah, when he's fighting Grievous... He does that whole two finger posture it's like oh my goodness really you people are making a mockery of this universe oh yeah, well, that's bad you know it's like my nose sounded better and I was mocking the mocking difficult to replace locations such as Zimbabwe yeah yeah Zimbabwe can be a difficult place overall I got a few friends over there still they seem to get by day by day, but it's certainly not the greatest place on the planet to be. Especially when the hyperinflation takes hold. Okay, Tony W. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. See, Sam, I used to love making planes. We were looking at A10 Warthog the other day. Oh, yeah, that'd be fun. Lucas has issues. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it was a. Uh, yeah. It was his baby for sure, you know, the whole Star Wars thing. But I think that's the trouble is when you do get something that popular and the population basically takes possession of your creation and you become quite defensive of it and you sort of you get very restrictive on what you let people get away with and things like that. It is a funny thing. I mean, I can understand it. I mean, God knows me, with my own software I do that. Uh, looking for my 80-20, so that's what I'm looking for, my 80-20 mix of alcohol. Just put a little dab there.
And we'll just slowly clear it out of this region. Without the 20% of water, this would not work. Yeah, that's pretty yucky. Can Northbridge repair BMW key or any... Well... <laughs> I miss my BMW. I look forward to getting myself another BMW soon. Probably won't, but if I get the opportunity, I will. Either that or I'll get a Tesla 3 Series, something like that. Goodness knows, we've got enough sunshine up here. I should be using it for something. Other than the fact that I spend all summer fighting it. So rather than fight it, I should load the house up with about 20 kilowatt worth of panels and make use of what's burning down on me for eight months of the year. Heck, even in our winters it's bright enough here to run most equipment constantly with it. And I will have to get a power wall installed. I'm thinking I'm going to need around about 20, maybe 30 kilowatt hour with a power wall installed. So it's going to be a fair bit of money, but it'll be worth it. Okay, I'll, we've cleaned that up pretty good now. Yeah, an E46. Mine was the E36, um, 1990 release models, I think it was. Uh, E36, 320i, with the sunroof and everything like that. A real, look at me, I'm a up-and-coming internet person. I'm important. Yay! I'm a, B I'm a jerk BMW driver. Oops, I just switched on my blinkers instead of... Uh, my wipers instead of my blinkers. That's always a classic. That's when you know someone's just getting used to their BMW. You see the wipers come on even though there's no rain. So, whoops, newbie. Did Paul ever take that fan apart to see if it had dirt? No, which fan are you talking about? The one for the one we did earlier today? I did not. It ended up that it seems the specs were perfectly good. In fact, they were better than my reference machine. In the UK, I think water will be more effective. Yeah, I heard you guys are getting a little bit of rain over there. We didn't get enough of that stuff. Do it yourself, 24, 25 kilowatt hour. Oh yeah, I, I think I've seen that guy, Wayne. I was watching him the other day, I think it was. Uh, if that's the one I think it is. That's the Australian guy. I'll have a look at that in a bit. I think a used Tesla S is about 40,000. I'll probably get a 3 Series because I don't really need the uh, full S or the P. Uh, yeah. I don't need anything that big. Most of the 90% of what I do is just, well, in fact, 95% of what I do is just scooting back and forth downtown. And that's maybe a 4, maybe 10 kilometer trip every day. So I don't even need that. Heck, a Nissan Leaf would do the trick for me, but I don't want a Nissan Leaf. I want a Tesla. Why get a Leaf when you can get a Tesla? Yeah, the Aussie bloke. Okay, yeah, I know who you're talking about, Wayne. No, without looking at the video. I saw him do a... He was... He did up a whole bunch of new packs to replace his existing 10 kilowatt hour system or something like that. That's a heck of a lot of work he did. I did like the spot world he was using, so I'm actually going to see if I can get one of those, because I've been looking for one for ages. 
one that works as well as what it seemed like his work there you know with the automatic one-handed work so that was uh hey did i put that little miniature screw in it i did not damn it too busy talking to people curse you all the leaf has a major design issue with battery cooling okay so they just didn't have any cooling did they <laughs> Just let it hang out in the wind. Does the leaf use the cylindrical cells? Or do they have some other cell structure? I haven't really looked that much at the leaf. Because pretty much nothing of it appealed to me in the first place. I see Honda's new little unit is out. But uh seems a little expensive for what it is. But that's Honda. K-World, that's the one, yeah. There's an alternative ban by you from mentioning... Oh, really? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. There must... Yep, yeah, alright. My brain has uh, no memory of that. <laughs> Who's got the pompous attitude... Sonia, Loke. Damn it, I'm getting interested in all the uh, gossip going on. I shouldn't be doing that. I've got to rise above the gossip. <laughs> Let's be real, I enjoy a bit of gossip. Who doesn't? Well, okay, some people can rise above it legitimately. Me, I like to keep my nose a little bit in that trough. Starts with A and ends with O. No, my brain's no good. Word games are not my thing. Oh, damn it! Oh, damn it! That is... Damn it. Curse you all. I'm not taking out the whole board. I'm going to do the heat sink instead. Now, of course, some techs will not bother to put that shroud back on. But I cannot not put it in. I have to put it back in. If it was there when it was delivered here, I must put it back. Really hope you enjoy what you're doing. I do, yes. Uh, fortunately, I get to work for myself. I set my own pace. I do a lot of different other projects, of course. I do programming, and I do normal PC repairs as well when they, when it suits me. Usually when I'm a little bit broke. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, but uh, no, I've got to take out the... i got to take out the board anyway. You gotta take the board out because there's a little nipple on this shroud that sits in this hole here. And yeah. Welcome to installing a circuit board in a MacBook. Attempt number three. Welcome to also why you probably shouldn't do live streams. If you want to maintain the aura of professionalism, then do not live stream. Because if you live stream, people will see what really happens. And what really happens is that you constantly do stupid stuff like that, which you only find out right at the last minute. Much like forgetting to put the earpiece grill in an iPhone 4 or 4S display. And then you have your moment at the end there where you try to decide whether you're going to jam that grill through the slot or whether you're just going to have to pull it all apart and do it again. By the way, don't jam it through the slot. It, it never works. <laughs> 
Not to say that we didn't try. Everybody tries. Sachin, thank you very much, Victor. I appreciate that. Thank you also for answering my questions that I had earlier. I appreciate that. Like it's any different from Lewis setting on fire for the nth time or TCRS injecting voltage into the ground pad. <laughs> He injects voltage into the ground pad. I haven't seen much of TCRS stuff. Usually because he streams just as I'm waking up first thing in the morning and I'm trying to deal with a bunch of other things or emails that have come in. Um, so yeah. You don't really see much of this on Lewis's streams anyway because this is something that's handled by other people. And there's a good reason to do that. But at this point, given that I am still a one-man workshop, I have to do everything. Alrighty. But it certainly does test your metal a little bit when you, particularly if you're having a rough day and you're struggling to, you know, um, keep up with your schedule, and then these things happen because you know you're going to lose ten minutes on this. But you also know that you simply cannot let it go out in that state. So you're faced with the inevitability of losing time in order to maintain your standards. And you do argue with yourself and wonder, is it worth it? Is it really worth it? I think it is. I think it's important to maintain that sort of level of quality in your work. If Micro could give you a hand. Uh, <laughs> He he sometimes will get up on my administration desk and get in the way. <laughs> That's about pretty much what he does. Most of the time he's pretty good. He will occasionally grab his mouse and decide to tell us all that he wants something or draw our attention. He'll just sit there yowling with his mouse. He won't yowl without his mouse. He's got to have his mouse so that he will yowl. Which is probably why he gets a little bit depressed when he doesn't have his mouse. Yes, it is worth it, yeah. Or is he? I just put water on my laptop five minutes ago. What do I do? I'm draining on the radio at the moment. Okay, first thing is, uh, have you taken the battery out? Make sure the battery's out. That's the key primary thing. If the battery is out, then yes, you can let it dry. If it was just water, chances are you might be able to get away with it. If it was something other than water, like soft drink, milk, coffee, tea, then you're going to have to disassemble it and you know, give it a clean out. Hey David. Uh, Jonathan, live streaming does help show integrity and process, uh, which is one reason why Lewis is a bit miffed at Google Ads for refusing him. Yeah, the Google Ads thing is very annoying, i got to admit. I, along with pretty much everyone else in the repair industry, was not impressed to see our adverts culled. And at the time, Google said, that's okay, we're going to implement a verification process. And if they have, I'm not aware of it still. And because as far as I can tell, everybody is still waiting to be able to verify their business so that they can advertise. I can't advertise at the moment. I basically have to rely on YouTube, word of mouth, and things like that. Without that, I would be dead in the water, particularly in a small town like this. We should arrange a big meeting for all repairs techs. <laughs> Lewis did invite me to the one million thing, which didn't really end up being much anyway, but 
Yeah, I mean, I'd be happy to attend his um, his shop just to visit and say hello. We have our differences in terms of how we see things and do things, but um, I'd still be interested to see what he's up to. He'd probably try and beat me, wrestle me, spray a can of freeze spray in my face. I don't know. But um, it'd still be interesting. However, the thing is, I don't really care to travel anymore. So that's kind of puts an end to that. Okay, I've got to get these Wi Fi cables out. That's snared under there, unfortunately. Yeah, democracy is a funny thing. Bit of an illusion. But it's the best of the worst, I guess, for now. I don't know if it will last outright, you know, overall. It's one of those political experiments that we're doing for a hundred years or so, <laughs> and see how it goes. In my opinion, I think half the problem is really the people. Uh, the people say they want democracy, but at the same time, they're not really willing to put the effort into what is required to maintain democracy. Instead, it just becomes a great big personality show, nothing more. And then I suppose the next step you take is you go for, well, let's try meritocracy. And I'm somewhat more supportive of that concept, but I know that's potentially discriminatory. Uh, yeah, no matter what choice you take, it's going to be a bad choice for someone. So I guess you're looking for the best of the bad, and I suppose right now that's where the current democracy situation is. But it does seem to be in the last... 20 years or so failing us at a more at an accelerating rate I should rather say but I unfortunately am not well versed in political stuff I don't know half the political terms I don't know many of the ocracy names or anything like that so yeah I try hard my strength is more on the technical side of thing, but that doesn't seem to count for much when it comes to politics. When you try to tell people that a mixed mode MBN network is going to be a crap ton waste of taxpayers' money, no one wants to listen to you. And then they all whinge and complain later. Like, well, the internet doesn't work very well. It's like, well, that's because you voted for the type that um, wasn't going to work very well. Where is the crossover flex? I don't believe the 1477 is the cr correct crossover flex for this model. Where is it? Freeze frames again? Damn. Oh well, it's out of the way now. Anyone see where that flex went? It looks like this, but I don't think this is it. Or is it the seventeen twenty two that I'm thinking of? Let's check on another board. Oh yeah, wait, no, yeah, I was wrong. 1722 is for the 1466, so this is actually the right one. I was doubting myself. It's a, oh yeah, yeah, big difference. Tony W, do you, use, do you use any extra metadata tags when you publish your videos? I do, yes. I add a couple of them in there, but nothing too much. 
Uh, Jason, yeah, you know, I was kind of looking under there, but I'm thinking, no, that's just not going to um, fit. I have done that in the past, but I don't believe it is actually under there. If Google Ads are done well, then I don't mind clicking on them. Yeah, sometimes they genuinely do provide you with the information or the seller that you're looking for, as it were if they're done well. But if they're not, then just like most ads, you just ignore them. Okay, I feel like that's actually... No. That's backwards. They're nested in backwards, so I'm going to have to fix that. Long one goes in first, short one follows behind. until you do that and you go, wait, that doesn't fit either. Come on. You can tell I'm getting cranky now. Okay. That's better. Ah, oh, see the camera's doing its bollocks again, eh? It may actually be the connector in the camera that's failing. Yeah, I think it's the camera connector itself that's failing, not the cables. In South Africa, the one who has the cash to side the rules. Yeah, <laughs> I think you mean on this planet. I think everybody plays by that game. Yeah, I mean, look how long Zuma was kept in power. In spite of everything, he still managed to hold on to power. That was ridiculous. I think it was unfortunate that... Um, I was about to say Mugabe, but that's, <laughs> that's Zimbabwe. That would have been a very unfortunate mistake. Um, I want to say Madiba, but that's, people won't know that name too much. Mandela. There. Uh it was unfortunate that he didn't get to stick around for another term. I think he did have, at least, so far as the population was concerned, the conflict between black and white. He had a pa uh, placating effect. You know, people were willing to actually try and work together because it was Madiba. But, um, yeah, I mean, his age got to him, understandably, and he had to hand off to Mbeki. But, it didn't really work thereafter and then all of a sudden the corruption started with the whole arms deal before you knew it and things just fell apart pretty damn quick after that and then of course Zuma turns up and it really went downhill yeah, yeah um, no this is actually 20 we've got the wrong board sorry this is the wrong one sorry here we go let's fix this there we go. That should fix that up now. Cash is king and the kings is hard rules. That's very right. You need to hurry up and become rich so you can change the system for the better. You really think I will change the system for better once I'm rich? That's the other thing is you start out with these ideals and you think that you're going to be the one that brings light, brings balance to the system. But I think by the time you manage to get to the position where you can do something, you've had to corrupt yourself in such a way that you're basically powerless to change anything. I think there are very, very few people that can get through to that level and have the power to do so, particularly in the political side of things. And I think that's why what happens instead is you get the people who become rich through other means, through capitalism and whatnot, such as, let's say, Elon Musk, um, Bill Gates, etc. Maybe not, uh, maybe not uh, Bezos. And then, then you have a little bit more of a chance of being able to make the world better through your wealth in that respect. Politically, I don't think it's really possible. You're going to be hamstrung by far too many things. Far too many 
deals with the devil that you signed to get to that position. Got a new regime, got a new client, the heavy South African accent. Fun talking with him on the phone. Yes, that's bro. Yeah. Um, is he Afrikaans or is he um, Zulu or what? I never know how to say the other damn name. What is it? X H Sosa or whatever. I should know that. I lived in that area. You know, uh, Highfeld. He's Afrikaans, okay. Without corruption, you'll never be rich. Yeah, I think about the only way you can really be rich without corruption is you strike it lucky with gold, the lotto. Not really from inheritance anymore these days. Inheritance is almost like a non-existent thing now. Everybody's burned through all their financial reserves by the time they finally get turned to dust. Let's see TV repair. Yeah, I'm, I'm Australian. Uh, originally hailed from Adelaide, and then moved all over Australia, and then over parts of the world, and finally back here in a little gold mining town. Hey Cecilia. Most get rich from one simple thing: live below your means and save, save, save. That is true. I mean, that's basically how I've managed to get now my savings for uh, this house. But i got to say, it's been a very long, arduous journey because there were a few... You can easily trip up in your late 20s or even early 20s. And it can take you a good 20 years to recover from that trip up, even though it wasn't a big trip up. You know, it just might have been at the wrong time and it just pushed you over the edge. Ah, uh, crikey. I've lost another screw down here. Let's get the let's get the collector out. Where's the big magnetic strip for me? Should I have a whopping great big oh there it is. This is a tool holder wall strip. No, I just use it for collecting screws off the floor. Yeah, well, what did we get there? Nope, that's a silly Toshiba screw. We don't want Toshiba screws. It's a good thing the camera can't see me down here. I dare say my face is probably going very bright red. Let's see. And there we go, we've got a win. That's that one there. Looks like we've picked up quite a few others at the same time and a couple of hairs that have fallen out of my scalp uh, probably from dealing with Toshiba laptops I'm being a bit presumptuous here, I'm putting the screws in before I've even tested it that's the way to live life parent leaving children home, oh yeah that's definitely, that's a such a rare thing now Yeah, most of the people are having to just cash out everything they can just to make it to their death. It makes me think that, you know, it's very unfavorable, but the concept of death taxes may actually be more viable at this point in time. So you basically don't get taxed at all, well, very minimally during your life, but then when you die, the government takes 95% of your estate or whatever. But while you're alive, you don't get taxed. But like I said, it's extremely unpopular. So any political party that would consider bringing that um, out would just be, that would lose straight away. <laughs> Stick it. Oh, it's a little too funny, you realise. <laughs> Not that um, I think you should look 
towards your inheritance as in a guaranteed thing i think you should absolutely go out there and do everything you can to um you know make your own success of things but um at the same time you know the people who seem to be relying on that as if well i'm going to get a house and i'm going to get this something like, no <laughs> Exactly, Jonathan. It's a it's a complex issue, and like I said, it's it's unfortunately too complex in this day and age to be able to bring it out. I was like, "Damn you! You went down there." Maybe that should just fall out. It's too complicated to be able to educate the public on how it would work. Um, it would just simply be demonized before you even got the first explanation out. And I think that's one of the big problems with the political scene at the moment is that there's no time or um, there's no ability to be able to explain a policy anymore. You've got three words. That's the best you're going to get. It's three words and you better hope they stick. The rest of it's just pure potluck. Yeah, Corey, I agree, you know, there shouldn't be any expectation of it. Everyone should do the best they can. That's the best way to go about it. And I know I'm certainly not expecting anything. Serious question, where can I get the Apple service diagnostics? Try on the Rossman forum, um, not the Rossman forum, the Discord. Uh, go into the Mac repair section and drop that question. Maybe someone will send you a um, private message. But anyway, getting back to the, you know, you make a simple mistake and things can cascade out of control. So I was like 28 or so and um, I just got them back from overseas and I made some choices that perhaps weren't optimal but they were driven by emotional demands um, trying to help family and things like that but it subsequently sort of put me behind where I was meant to be and instead of just taking like six months or a year to recover I just kept slipping back 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 further uh, until things got way out of control and I think I was like about 80,000 down in um, unsecured debt and this wasn't due to me buying things or anything like that. I wasn't buying big screen TVs cars heck no I mean I sold pretty much everything I could it's just the cost of trying to run business and living anyway so finally just in the last three four years I suppose things have come together nicely and with the combination of being very thrifty on the spending finally getting ahead and as an example of that it's only taken about six months now to save up what I needed to in order to be able to put down the deposit for this house whereas prior to that point it was like you get to the end of each week and you'd be thinking oh man I hope I get these jobs come in so that I can pay these bills and you'd be bouncing off that zero value uh, on your bank account for a great many years but now it's like I don't feel like I'm having to do too much I'm just coasting along as I am and the savings are piling up so yeah it's it's difficult you have to be in it for the long run and you have to have that tenacity to just get up each day and keep at it because no one, you can hear the stories about it, but no one really has a magic wand to save your day. You're the only one that really can do it. Keep pushing to pay off your house. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm hoping to get it knocked out in three years. I'm going to be happy to actually have a place under my name, but I'm going to be extra happy to actually own it. Okay, what the... Oh, yeah, that's okay. Yep. 
I've given him so much away to exes that I need a second level. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you can just have those unfortunate choices. Wow, this... What is going on with this trackpad? Something funny is going on with the trackpad. I don't know whether it's the gloves. There's a... I think it's a Moshi protector on it. Views on politics, pizza toppings, not necessarily reflect the views of the YouTuber affiliates. Yep, that's a good uh, way to put it. Okay, let's see if this goes. When you own it, you don't have even stress. Oh, that'd be really nice. I mean, you'll have the annual rates as we call it here or it's not land tax but it's similar enough consider it land tax and out here for this piece i think it's around about two and a half to three thousand dollars australian per year um, i think that's a perfectly acceptable amount of money to be paying for the general services are you going to purchase house i currently reside in that is the plan ainsley yes Yeah, that's right, Like, yep, you just, if you run around with the mindset that you're expecting someone else to save you, you will never get saved. What doesn't help, I find, is when people will find uh, stories on the internet or YouTube of people who were saved by some benefactor, and so they start believing that there's a fairy godmother or someone who's going to save me out there, I've just got to keep looking. Um, it's a dangerous mindset to be in and you can these people usually will end up being quite resentful of the world when they see other people having success and they're not because they're like well where's my benefactor yeah where's the person who's meant to save me benefactor I used incorrectly before wow this is really really slow It should not be this slow. I've had these machines before and they do not take this long. Bewitching out. Um, ah, yeah. Hey, Winfield. Yeah, when the trash talkers arrive. Not the wind talkers, trash talkers. What's this? Lots of crabs stuck in a bucket out there. They try to pull others down. Oh, yeah, yeah. Michael Chan. Yeah, trackpad issue is probably quite right there, Michael. I agree. Yeah, it's definitely... It's spacking out. It's all over the place. The battery's not being detected. Oh, yes it is. Wait, I'm completely blind. It's right there in front of me. And time to ignore roof wrecks. No, it won't be a failing hard drive in these ones. It is, as has been mentioned, it'll be trackpad or battery issues. Uh, the charge rate seems to be good, given that it's at 59%, so I, and we've got a trackpad that is misbehaving, so I'm sooner going to blame the trackpad. Let's see if I can plug in an external mouse, and at least that way I can shut it down. Because, yeah, it shouldn't be doing it like this. Mouse 1, mouse 2. It is struggling. It's like the trackpad is actually sending out bad signals. Yeah, we got all sorts of false signals being put through. We'll disconnect it, see if it still misbehaves. Okay, Prater, welcome back. Have a go. Yeah, welcome when you come back. <laughs> I'm not sure if I've got a spare one of these right now. Mm. 
But yeah, it does look like the track of it. It's interesting, the coffee was supposedly spilled here. So it would have been a fairly... It could be a bad keyboard. Maybe, you know, stuff got into the keyboard. I can see some... So this may actually require a keyboard and trackpad replacement. I'm just waiting for it to shut down properly. I don't like just, um, you know, cold killing, even though it is just a USB drive, I still don't like cold killing it. <coughs> even though you want to because it's taking forever. Actually, 2012 trackpad, I think I can use, um, you can use the later ones as well, can't you? Just looking to see if I've got one. Well, we'll have a look when we open it up. Um, my main concern at this point will be if we have got junk in the keyboard, then we're going to have to rip the keyboard out. Oh, come on. This is just taking way too long. Maybe I will just have to cold kill it. Yeah. It might be the cable, but we'll have a look. Remember what I said about being a bit presumptuous about putting the screws back in? Looks like that played out. So while this person may not have to get themselves a board repair, they're still going to have to be paying for a trackpad and probably possibly keyboard. Ah. Cable is loose. Hmm. Well, we'll see. Cable, cable looks properly attached there. Disconnect that so we don't do anything stupid. Oh yeah, yeah, I definitely smile a lot when I see those dollars turn up. I had to spend quite a bit today just restocking everything. It's funny, you spend quite a bit on, say, iPhone screen replacements and you don't blink twice yet. You just sort of go, yep, okay, let's buy that. But for some reason, when it comes to me spending similar amounts of money on solid state drives, I um, <laughs> seem to stutter when it comes to clicking the purchase now button. Mr. Bianco! Oh yes, very soon, ice cream time. Thank you very much. You know, I can't keep eating at the rate that you're paying me, so there's going to be a bit of a backlog. So my apologies if I uh, don't get to consume the money appropriately in time. Thank you very much. I do always appreciate that. Okay, so we're looking for a little bit of corrosion here, but um, I'm not seeing anything that I would normally... I'm looking at the edges. Sometimes you can see if it's wicked in. So I'm more thinking we may in fact have a keyboard issue. So I'll disconnect the keyboard and see how that goes. I mean everything looks secure. Let's pull out this, see if we've got any corrosion on here. Sometimes you can have just a spot of corrosion on the trackpad flex that you didn't see. It only has to be on one pin and that's enough. Let's see how we go here. Have we got any corrosion? 
the middle pin looks a little bit but really I genuinely can't complain about that that is really perfectly good gotta have ice cream reserves never know when there'll be a national shortage yep <laughs> that's true yeah like toilet paper can't believe they've run out of that again I could see the build up coming up uh, for the toilet paper shortage again just in the news articles and you know with the Victoria COVID cases picking up and well, a few weeks ago I restocked and figured I will pick up an extra packet now while it's not um, well while it's available and then yeah on the weekend sure enough bam it happened the panic buying began again the cr doesn't appear to be any aggressive crimping there's a bit of junk in there but that's to be expected I'm gonna leave the keyboard disconnected and see if that improves there is a coin shortage happening over in the states why um why would there be a coin shortage? What's causing that? I do need to put one screw into the shaz uh, to the bottom plate though. I do not care for these things to flip backwards. Okay. Stores accepting plastic over currency. Well, you mean I would have thought you mean stores accepting currency over plastic. I was just thinking maybe the slowness is because I'm using that. Um, I'm gonna have to use this port now, just to verify. Remember, that was the damage to USB port. And I have to put my batteries back in there because we used them the other night in our scales. I need to buy a new bunch of these triple A's. I need to get the new pro ones. These are the standard ones. They're quite old now. They've served me very well but they are getting a little bit old I don't know if I'm going to be able to make this boot properly How can Copaz get a raise if he's not even working for Lewis? It's like a 10% raise on zero. <laughs> I don't know. Are you working for Lewis these days, Copaz? Or, I mean, I just thought you were basically just sort of spending your free time there or something like that. Ah, this is going to boot into the person's OS. Damn it. you got to zero to zero infinite rays cartons in stock okay i've usually i buy the double a's a fair bit i use them a lot but the triple a's i've sort of had languish around i think i've got about 30 or 40 of them i used to use them more when i had torches that took triple a's but since I've upgraded all my torches to use the 18650 cells, um, I don't use the triple A's quite so much anymore. Remove their drive, yeah, should do that. 
It'll take a lot longer, but it will still do the trick. Sort of thought of doing that after I put the screw in. Hey, Mato Dado. Yeah, I'm just wasting time. Just waiting for this to boot. It um, would appear as though it still has issues though because it's still taken a very long time. Oh, of course, that's not going to work because <laughs> the keyboard doesn't work. Oh man. I think I've gone past the witching hour. I think it's time for me to actually close up for the night. I've become mentally deficient. You know what happens after midnight. I'm kind of like the opposite of gremlins. Instead of becoming a conniving, beastly creature, I sort of become a placated brainless one Fujitsu rechargeables, I don't know those ones uh, do they have the same properties that the inner loops have as in you know, the long term charge retention or are they more like standard nickel metal hydrides where they bleed off after ages uh, let's see, put the sticker back on here we don't want to take the risk of losing that Rebuild. <laughs> yeah. One of these days I will rebuild a CPU. One of these days. Okay. You in? You in? Actually, I'm. No, just leave that there. Copas, why don't you just send her a 1466 from 2015 or something like that? You can use DD Rescue to migrate the drive across or just use the time machine and drive across and at least you'll still have what seems like the same computer but it'll be a hell of a lot nicer. Okay, we're booting. I mean, even at 2013, 14, 66 has to be a world better. Oh, uh, getting dreary and tired. I don't really rage quit, I just fizzle out. I'm going to have to get myself one of these 2012 chassis. I don't have a 2012 chassis that I'm aware of. Or do I? I'm pretty sure I don't. I've got the old A1369s and I've got the 3437s. 
but yeah, I don't think I got 2012. It's just one of those obscure machines that initially when you start encountering them, you sort of ignore them. Seems to be running pretty quick. I have to. And the touchpad is working just fine now, so I think we've actually got a bad keyboard. So the keyboard's gonna have to get ripped. And I do not have one of those in stock at the moment, I'm still waiting for mine to arrive. You have four chassis. Alright, I won't say no to that. That actually will be a useful item. Let's see. Frames per seconds are a little bit down. Hey, Panda Squad. You new here? Yep, terrifying stuff, I know. Had to test the camera, make sure it could handle uh, the horrendous imposition. The sun's definitely slowing that down. But it, it could be the fact that I can't see a keyboard, it could be bad battery. We're doing three frames per second, that's ridiculous. One frame per second, it's lost its head. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate that. All right. <coughs> well, I will order a replacement keyboard and trackpad for this anyway. I mean, I should have that on hand regardless. And then I will rig that up outside of the chassis with the board, use the display cable extension and see how it goes. See, right now, it's only doing 50 do 52 degrees, so it's, and what is it, uh, yeah, well at least we know the USB port is working okay, let me plug in the external display, hopefully this does not go pop, because if it goes pop, then well, there'll, there'll be a fine end to an otherwise uneventful night. We've lost the display there. Let's switch back. HDMI. Using Jim uh, Jim Hook's supplied screen for me. Which has got this cute. There we go. So we know that's working. Crap, something just went wrong there. Oh. What is it doing? Well, we know the display output's working. So that's good. Uh, VGA. We'll disconnect that. Uh, let's see, our last test to see if it picks up an SD. Uh, let's see. Have I got an SD? Not very often they have them anymore. Yep, looks like a good one. Let's see if this goes bang.
You can use the 1369 touchpad keyboard for testing. Okay, thanks, Piotr. That's good to know. Now, I don't know if that's working or not. It doesn't seem like it is. Not sure if it's not detecting it being inserted or not, so we may actually have some board repair work at hand. Because typically it should show up over here. Let's try wiggle it in and out a bit. The little lever on the SD card, push it is up. And, uh, you're talking about right on the side here. That's for the read only versus the read write. Yeah, I don't have my Linux boot USB stick at the moment here. It's downstairs. Uh, let's see. Let's run terminal. Something's definitely making it run exceptionally slow. Is it a known good SD? No, it's not. It's just something that I picked out of the box of box of rejects. Yeah, I've got a... That one there should work. I don't recall ever using that one. using the wrong password on my machine. <laughs> no, nope, doesn't appear as though it's doing anything. So we may have yet a keyboard um, a SD fault. So maybe it's not sensing it, maybe you know it's not telling the system that it detects one. Uh, there. Oh well, looks so like we've got ourselves a project for tomorrow then. But in the meantime, I think it's probably time for me to say goodnight, uh, wrap it up before I do any stupid mistakes, or at least more stupid than I normally do. And I, uh, well, at least you know you'll have something to watch for tomorrow. And in the meantime, I hope you guys get some sleep or get on with your work day and not waste your employer's wages on watching my work being done. Let's see. Panda, thank you. Let's see. Run one of your Sharpies along the leading edge and see if it contacts rubs off. Oh, that's a good idea. idea. Yeah, see if they scratch it. Uh, let's see. Alright. Alright. I'm out of here. Ice cream awaits as well as uh, maybe one episode of Deadwood. And I will see you all tomorrow. You will take care. I'll see you then. How many times do I have to say I'll see you? The things you repeat.